life. Some wiseacre said, is like a sewer. What you get out of it depends on what you put into it. This sewage in a mother and mingi. Come, come, fun on work. You could jack on a manumbas co caribuna sewage. Sewage in a gang and nipping in a umenda kazi. Una could do not put up to the cause of me bebwas, mendan a magia to Kikudato and a manpaculala, mattress in me lower, Viombo comes in the Gondogos at his manda. He magi, Ukitembe and Dani come out to who and a pity and Dani or Kivukas of the Guinea Semi and Chesu. Can you napata in total Kizu? I can go the year magi in Baka in a more effect other than a big tenor. Matibabu and Kumatibabu. Sasa Sana Sana, imagine a letter yo in a letter umbu to come at you. Nairobi has put in very little in the way of improving its sewerage since the first system was completed in Karyobangi, northeast of Nairobi, in 1961, the year Joma Kenyatta was released from prison and American President Barack Obama was born. At independence, when the Union Jack was lowered at Uhuru Gardens, Nairobi in 1963, Kenya had 7 million people. Today, we are 40 million and still counting. But population explosion and Nairobi's organic growth was not matched with expansion of the city's sewer system. For years, Nairobi relied on the solo colonial efforts of 1961 until a second sewer plant was commissioned in 1980 at Dandora, further east of the city. Fourteen years later, that's how long we take to think of sewers. Expansion of the Dandora plant was completed, making it one of the largest of its kind around. But its benefits were short-lived. Inadequate garbage collection and shoddy maintenance saw sewers get clogged. The world over, sanitation goes hand in hand with adequate sewage services, yet less than half of Nairobi is covered by a proper sewerage system that's already under pressure from the ripple effects of urbanization and the mushrooming of peri-urban centers housing population density and escalating growth of slums where the majority have been left to their own devices. Nairobi's Kibera slums had the flying toilet, a prehistoric way of helping oneself in a plastic bag, then throwing it. Missile style, as far as possible. Flying toilet, see, in a kuaga sasa, to say me landlord and a cho. A landlord and a cho, sasa in a bidi, Mtu wajisaidia kwa kartasi, alafu kwa paper bag, alafu anatupa huko kwa, kwa hiyo maji. Flying toilets, mtu anachukua karatasi, anaenda aja, anatupa kwa mabati juu, mvua ikikuja, na teremusha chini, naenda paka kwa nyumba. Flying toilets contaminated water sources, causing spreading of diseases. The United Nations Development Program estimated that two out of three Kibera residents used the flying toilets in 2006. Although it has been replaced with a peepoo, a small biodegradable bag coated with a chemical that turns human waste into fertilizer, the problem of sanitation in slums punctuates the importance of a reliable sewerage system anywhere, everywhere. The sewer situation is not very good in Nairobi. Uh, coverage uh, is uh, a bit low in terms of uh, the recommendations. Uh, for a city like Nairobi, we should have in 100% coverage, whereas we are not. Indeed, for ages, Nairobi was like a sewer rat, decaying in a cesspool of priding itself as the green city in the sun. Back then, Sewer services were managed by municipal and city councils that didn't add an inch in any way of expansion. The Water Act of 2002, however, drained that situation into the gutter. The Act mandated water boards, like Athi Water Services Board, to manage the water sector, and by extension, sewerage services. The Water Act uh, that was enacted in 2002 was culmination of a 
a lot of activities that were geared toward improvement of the water. Just why the board began increasing sewer network coverage, such as the Gatharaini trunk sewers? It's basically a sewer project comprising about 48 kilometers of uh, trunk and lateral sewers. Uh, the project began on 27th April 2010. It was a two year duration and uh, I must say that the contractor actually put in his best foot forward. We managed to finish the project uh, a month ahead of schedule and we were able to hand over the said project to Athi Water Services Board on 26th of April 2012. They are part of sewerage improvement for the city contained in the 1998 Nairobi Master Plan for Sewer, Sanitation and Drainage whose target is to raise the sewer system coverage from the current 40% to 59% by 2014. It covers part of the northern Nairobi, covering Gidurai, Zimmerman, part of Fome Estate and Mwiki areas and Kasarani areas. Gatharaini trunk sewers, whose construction began in 2009 via a 1.6 billion grant from the World Bank, are a response to a rising population along Thika Road, which, with the completion of the superhighway, will only create more demand. The Fund World Bank, who started uh, with us in 2004 when the board was formed. What the project basically means for the people around it is that uh, now uh, we've had. Uh, all people around this area uh, discharging their sewer either into septic tanks or illegally into the rivers around. Uh, what it means now is that uh, the residents of this area have a safe and uh, environmentally friendly means of disposal of sewer. The lower reaches of the Gatharaini trunk sewers are accessible from Kangunda Road, the upper ones from Thika Road. Gatharaini trunk sewers stretch from Ruai, Ruaka, Mwiki, Kasarani, Garden Estate and Zimmerman 49 kilometers of precast concrete in all. Gatharaini trunk sewer will go a long way in ensuring improvement in urban hygiene, sanitation and pollution which will in turn contribute to improvement in public health by containing the frequent outbreak of waterborne diseases experienced in slums. But there are changes in connecting Nairobians to sewerage services that ensure the greatest stream of human industry flows out to fertilize the world. Some evils include murder, theft, adultery of the tongue, slander abuse, idle talk of the mind, and vandalism, and theft of manhole covers and frames. Encroachment on sewer lines, dumping solid waste and deliberate blockage of our sewer system.